Hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of A Daisy Diaries. Today I am joined by one of my closest friends in the entire world. We have been friends for over a decade, which sounds crazy to say. I'm going to let her introduce herself. Hey guys, I'm Jackie Romero. I am Daisy's. I feel like I'm your closest friend at the moment. I feel like you've been my closest friend for a long time. I just feel like we've never actually like declared it yeah we haven't really said it yeah no i think we're on the low low yeah when somebody was like are y'all best friends we were kind of like we haven't established it but i feel like we haven't established it but like we know it you know like we don't need to like tell the world but just we just know it no need to show it yeah yeah i wanted to bring jackie on my podcast because i feel like and i know that she brings out the best in me i feel the most comfortable with her and i was telling her that you know if I'm being honest, I felt like my podcast was taking a different path that I wasn't expecting it to take. It, it kind of felt like I was having to sit down and interview people. And then I kind of took a step back and I'm like, wait, I don't actually like to like come up with questions and do research and like interview. Like I want to sit down and just have girl talk. You know, I want it to be I wanted to feel very more vulnerable organic and more and organic. organic. Just literally like we're just like at my house having to sleep over. And I think moving forward, that's what I wanted to do. So I'm trying to like redirect the path of my podcast and I wanted Jackie to come on here. And I was like, I, for those that don't know, Jackie is so active on TikTok and I love your TikTok. I look forward to all your TikToks. And I was like, dude, you bring, (laughs) what are you laughing about? It's my hobby. Okay. (laughs) Okay. But I love it. And I was like, dude, you would be so good on the podcast. Um, I, I took Jackie with me to New York fashion week and she got to see what my life is like behind the cameras. And she was like shook. She was blown away. And I was like, I, I was like, would you be down to come to LA? So spontaneous. So last minute. Um, Guys, she literally (laughs) called me like an hour before she was on the plane and i was was like hey are we gonna take i was like are we gonna take the same flight when are you leaving she's like actually i'm 40 (laughs) i was like what i am i'm like that though i'm so last minute i'm so spontaneous i just think i flow better that way when i'm under pressure but no one knows how spontaneous and on the go you are like this girl doesn't have an itinerary. She makes no, I it. I make it like on as I'm on boarding the plane, as I'm getting off the plane. And then you're like, what do we do that? But I will say what really has helped like keep my life organized is my publicist, Emily. Mm-hmm. She has helped me out so much. Like when we got to New York Fashion Week, I was like, hey, we actually don't have to worry about anything. Like everything's planned out. She's going to meet us at the show. She's going to walk us to the shows. Like um, that was comforting. It was comforting. And it was a new experience for the both of us because it was actually like my first real, like legit New York Fashion Week. Um, and I Which know th- it was also my first. I know. And it was a dream. And I was like, Eep. but I loved it. I, I think what I love <laughs> to do is I love to be able to give those experiences to the people that I love. I think it's just better sharing it with other people, you know? <laughs> no, like Loki is, Loki, Daisy is like make a wish foundation. Like <laughs> if anyone has a dream, she's like, I'll help you. I'll make it come true. I am. I think I just love to give. No, you are a giver. And I don't know if everyone knows how generous and loving and giving you are, honestly. I think I only show that side really to like my closest people. My really close people. I feel like loyalty is royalty and and it takes a long time for, for me to like actually give as much to people. I feel like... Even with people that I barely meet, I still give, but not to the extent where, like, I give to, like, my family and my loved ones Mm -hmm. my friends. But New York was a dream. It was so much fun. Can we talk about that real quick? Because it It was was so fun. It was fun. The first night that Jackie and I got there, I was like, we're going out. We're doing this. We're doing that. (laughs) We went to the nylon party, which was so fun. It was fun. And I remember, I, I feel like I was, like, so on edge. I was, like, very, like keeping my guard up and you were like dude like let your guard down like we're never gonna see these people again I was like you know what you're right but also the thing about me is like if I see a cute guy I'm like oh my god like is he looking like blah 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 and you're like do you want me to talk to him I'm such a wing girl I'm also a wing woman though but you're not because I'm a real wing girl I feel like if someone ever comes along I'm like I'll help you I think that I lose so much fear when it comes to anyone else if it has nothing to do with me like I'm so courageous I feel like I'm the same way, though, because, like, I, I play Cupid, okay? I play Cupid when I'm around my friends. I told you about the story in Aspen, like, mm-hmm. you know, so. You're a good wing girl. I can see that. 
but also, I'm a better wing girl. Okay, you know what? I, I'll I am. You, I'll give you that. Like, also, we're both Libras, but we're I'm a September Libra. But I don't really believe in that, but okay. Okay. <laughs> you're in October. Your I was birthday? just born in October. That's it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so New York was filmed the first night. We got to, oh my God, we met up with your friend. We went to the Puma event. Oh yeah, it was so nice to see like familiar faces in like an unknown city because like you just feel more at home, like with your friends, with your people. Well, you knew a lot of, I feel like you're more familiar with New York. N me, not so much, but yeah, I you're more had, LA. I had <laughs> LA. <laughs> <laughs> I've been here twice. Um, no, yeah, but it was fun. Um, you know, everywhere I go, I do meet men, but then you know what ended up happening where I was like oh like you were like oh who are you with blah blah and I was like I'm here with this guy and then I actually end up finding out what he does one thing like, about this girl is that she's miss chit chatty like she'll enter the room and chit chat with anyone there I am a social butterfly you okay? are very social because so social like I'm I more can't. to myself I'm but you're very like I can't help it I, mm -hmm. I love meeting new people like you, you could put me in a room with a bunch of strangers and I'll end up like having conversations with all of them having friends I think oh, that's she'll get their social security like she's like what do you do where do you live who are you what's your that social media so true I think that's an attribute about myself that I genuinely just love yeah um I don't know I think you I, I just love meeting strangers honestly I love knowing about their story what they do like everything I think it just I don't know it just but adds, I think that's like it adds to my experience of where I'm at and who I'm with and what I'm doing that's why I don't mind going to places by myself and which is why I'm always traveling alone and stuff because I never, I'm not, I don't have social, social anxiety. Do I have anxiety? Maybe a little bit, but, um, I don't have social anxiety. But you're not reserved to any I'm level. not reserved you're just at all. like yourself, which is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I feel Versus like. Versus me, I'm like more reserved. And I think that's how we balance each other because. Yeah, that is true. You're such a social butterfly and I'm. I'm just like, I'm more aware. Hand, I'm like, more aware and I'm like, Daisy, we don't know these guys. No, honestly, if a guy were like, hey, hop in our car, we're going to go to, I'm be like, yeah. You're like, da, 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 da. And then you're like, Daisy, I don't think this Daisy? is a good idea. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> New York, all in all, what would you rate it? What was your favorite part about it? What was your favorite show? I'm honestly so thankful that you were able to experience the shows with me. The very last show that you weren't able to come with me, I was like, a little bit not nervous but I was just like fuck like I wasn't talking to anyone because mm -hmm. like there were a lot of people at a higher caliber and they were kind of acting like yeah like who is this girl here like I think that like fashion week is so fire bomb but I feel like it can also be very intimidating yeah, because definitely can. all of these girls like have it together they're like in their best looks and it can just be a little intimidating because no one talks to you. Like, no one comes no up to one you. No one talks to you no at all. No one is really that friendly, honestly. There was a little people. There was there were some um, some women, like, the when we were at the Bachelor show, the girl sitting next to me, she was having conversations the whole oh, time. Oh, yeah, yeah. So there yeah. are some really nice girls. I, I here and there, though. Here and I there, defi though. I definitely think that there's a lot of, like, people that think that they're better than other people. I just, like, look, the way I see it, it's, like, it doesn't matter how much money you have or I have. When we're both dead, we're both going to be six feet underground. So it doesn't matter. That's why I never think that I'm better than anyone. I never think that I'm cooler than like anything. But it is like I have always reminded myself like and I'm also not afraid of death. So it's like this is inevitable. <laughs> not <laughs> her getting both. so dark. <laughs> but it, it's true. It like, is I, true. I don't mean to get dark, but I, I always remind myself of this. I'm like, dude, whenever me mm. and this person like yeah. everyone's no, going to die like and like be six feet below the ground. So I just don't think that there's a, a need or a reason to feel like you're better than anyone because you have more money or whatever it is, you know? Yeah, so. it can be very vain. And yeah. I think that's a side of it that I saw. It's also very beautiful. Like, and it's like it's such- It's glamorous. It's so glamorous but, and fun and girly, but it can also be very vain. Like, yeah. it just depends, like the perspective you take on it, but it is, for sure, it is. like everyone is human. And I think that's like where humility comes in. Like, yeah. okay, strip your clothes, strip your finances, strip your career. Like you're just another girl and it's yeah. okay. Like you don't have to perform and be anybody. And I'm just so chill. I think that's something that people also don't understand about me is that I am honestly, I'm but so chill. I feel like you have tunnel vision. Like you're go, 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 go. You don't see anything except the end result. You're kind of like everything else is a blur versus yeah. some people see it all. 
and you're very much goal orientated. Like I have to get there at this time. I have to walk in at this I'm, time. I have to like. I'm very like. Which that I feel like that's why you've gotten so far because you're so goal oriented. Yeah. You're not as emotional as other people. Uh, I don't think you're emotional, bro. At all. Really? I think you have like thick skin. Jackie. You're very like. Wait, what do you mean? I am rational. emotional. I'm emotional. Not really, wait. Nah. <laughs> wait. <laughs> You're like, I don't agree with that. Garrett is like, this bitch is emotional. Trigger her right now. Nada. No, wait, that is so good that you calm down that. No, really? I don't think you are. I'm emotional, wait, 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 bro, because I can wait, wait, cry, wait, wait, bro. Wait, 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 wait. I can cry. I don't think I've ever seen you cry at all. Wait, hold on. Wait, wait. I'm like, I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> Jackie, I don't believe you. Wait. Hold on. I think I'm more emotional. Hold on. Well, I think in retrospect. Okay, uh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, I'm more emotional than you, but you're a little diva. So maybe someone can take that as emotional. What do you mean but by diva that? But diva in the best way, like you're a little Kim Kardashian, like boom, boom, bop. What does that have to do with me being emotional? <laughs> like, if I you really care about something, you're triggered. You're like, let's get it done. Let's fix it. It takes a you're... lot for me to get triggered. I will say that. Like, I don't really, like, that um, sense? I, don't know. I think, like, um, I think specific situations and, uh, like, actions can trigger me to where I'm, like, an emotion. Wait, but, like, also, like, you've seen me throughout the years to the point. Wait, I, think, I have seen you throughout the years. I think... I get emotional when it's already like too late, when like the bomb is about to explode, and then once I let it out, it, I let it out. And it I ends will up say like, you're not easily stressed, but you do take things very seriously. What do you mean? In like the best way, like you really, really care. And I'm very passionate about very, everything that I do, about the people very around important me. Important to you, yeah, everything. 100%. Yeah, but I think emotionally, I think I'm emotionally detached. I don't know if that's good, sister. Because I don't think that's good. I don't think it's I, good I, to be numb because you need to be aware of like what's happening and like how you feel. And it's okay to feel like, hey, like I'm, I'm not okay today. You know, like I'm stressed because today's not a good day. But I think my thing. It's be, a wave with you. Some days you're. I think I just rather like not. It's because I know that I can get very emotional. And I know that if I get into my feelings, whether it's with work, with personal life, with relationships, like it takes me a long time to kind of get out of it. And because of the life and the way that I've like trained myself, mm -hmm. it's almost been like, I have things to do. I have people to take care of. I have this. this, this. So let me just put that aside. And it's, it's not, and you don't let yourself feel. I, I, I feel like I do, but then I don't, you know, like February was like such a hard month for me. And I feel like I'm better now at reaching out. And I would call you and be like, Hey, I'm going through this. And you would pray for me. You would help me out. And I'd be like, yeah, like, I'm fine. I'm okay. But then I would go and turn off my location and everyone would freak out and be like, where's Daisy? What is she doing? Like, she's in LA. Blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I would literally just let myself, I just wanted to disconnect from everyone. And I wanted to just feel and cry it out. But also because of my past. But everyone I think that's like, like your way of guarding your heart. Like, I just don't like protecting to... yourself and you numbing yourself is your way of saying like, okay, I, I don't want to feel it, but I'm also going to protect myself from these feelings feelings and from what i'm going through and like you detach yourself in the way that i detach like, myself in a you think it's protecting yourself but i don't think it's healthy but it's it's also like it's the way that you cope i think it's, it's my the way, way that of surviving. you protect yourself i think it's my way of i my my brain goes into like survival mode so mm -hmm. if if i feel like i'm about to have a mental breakdown or like something catastrophic is happening in my personal and my career you're like I, a little turtle the mid this no <laughs> way you know what the i see it as like i see it as like a switch so every time it's so crazy and i've never said this ever before but like when i feel like i am about to go through something or i'm about to feel something super intense i'm like turn it off and it's like a switch that turns off and i go into complete numbness and i'm so good at being so detached from people from my family from my and it's just kind of like there's a your body defense here. mechanism yeah i'm like i go into survival mode and then once i feel like i'm comfortable and everything's okay in my life I then think, i'm like turn it on and then it's i like, think once you're ready to handle it to face it you're like okay let me go through it but you're 
But if I have like, a lot of your first reaction is turn it off, turn off, shut down, silence yourself. Yeah. And it's don't like, think about it. Don't talk about it. Like, and I'm able to like still navigate through work, through life, through everything because it's turned off. But yeah. then as soon as like, okay, I'm back at home. For example, like I'm traveling so much and like right now I'm about mm -hmm. to go back home for like a week. Then I have time to like sit back and be like, okay, what actually did happen in New York? What actually happened in Aspen? What actually happened in the past couple of days? Let me internalize it. Let me feel it. And if something bad happened, then I'll deal with it then. But I won't deal with it in the moment for sure. No, 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 no. I'm just kind of like, like you said, go, go, go. And then once I have time to like internalize the situation, then I'll do it if I want to. But what not. scares you about like processing like those hard feelings? <clears throat> like what what is it like is it gonna mess up your schedule like is it no gonna I just think because of the way that I used to deal with situations back then if I were to deal with it in that moment at that time I know it's not gonna lead to something healthy or it's it's not gonna have like a good ending because like I feel I feel things a little too much and I can I think I feel more than the normal person. I'm a super empathetic person and like it can really drown me and destroy me and it's like I'd rather do it when I'm in a safe space. For example, like when I go back to Dallas, I'm in a safe mm -hmm. space, I'm in my home, I'm by myself. I can cry if I want to, I can scream, I can throw, I can punch, I can do whatever I want and not feel judged, but like let's say I go through something right now and I'm having to process it in this mm -hmm. moment during this podcast, I will literally like have a and mental breakdown in front of everyone. And I don't want to do that. So and it's I like, think like being your friend for over a decade, I've seen you like be your, not your real self. Cause they're both real. Like you're both of like your brand and who you are yeah. the same person, but you're super professional. And I think that's <laughs> one thing that I've noticed that yeah. if you're on the clock, you're not going to let it affect you because yeah, for you sure. have, such a high regard of like your brand. I hold myself doing. to very high standards as well. So like, I think that's why you also like don't want it to affect, let's say, what you're up to. Yeah, for sure. So when you go for home, sure. you're like, okay, I'm off the clock. I can. It's just a balance thing. It's literally like black and white. Like yeah. Daisy back in Texas is such a different version of myself yeah. versus like here like being in the spotlight like yeah. still like my friends here that know me for me I'm, I'm still able to be myself but it's just literally like this Hannah Montana life that I live you do have a little Hannah Montana <laughs> life <laughs> well, I do and it's like I'm having to I'm literally being literally, pulled by like, like 10 analogy. different directions at the same time you know I yeah. I feel like and I'm so glad that would I'm would you trade no, Would I you trade this for anything. No, I love my life. You yeah. want to know why? Because I'm able to choose when I want to go into that life and when I want to come out of it. Mm -hmm. Because I ha I have a really good team around me to where if I'm like, hey guys, like I need a break. I'm genuinely not feeling good. You know, like I was literally supposed to land from Aspen, unpack and pack and leave the next morning. And I was like, hey guys, like I, my body, me mentally, like I need an extra day. Mm -hmm. We were able to push the fitting. We were to build, and I love that. Um, I feel like now I'm able to balance everything so well. And the thing about me is like, I just need a day or two to recharge and I'm good. You were like, I need a whole week. I'm not used to this lifestyle. <laughs> I'm like, I need a vacation from the vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I need to. But that's the thing. I feel like you're so extroverted. Like you, you already have the rhythm of your lifestyle, yeah, sure. of your work life, of which your is work life balance. Like, which is you why. You already know how to operate. Which is why I find it so difficult for me to even envision me bringing another partner into the lifestyle that I have because now you're able to see because the number one question is why is Daisy Marquette still single do That's you want to answer mystery. that yeah, no I cannot answer that That's I'm not, not the sing. lord no <laughs> I'm not Jesus himself <laughs> what no no but I, feel I, like I you don't have know an I honestly don't know but I just think that if something doesn't happen, then it's not meant to be. And That's what it's I'm just saying. Like I don't, I don't at. force. I've never tried to force a relationship or anything. Like, but also I'm just like, if I see one little thing that gives me the ick or that I just see as like a turn off, I'm like, bye. I won't even give you like a. And I think that goes back to protecting yourself. You're 
really good at guarding your heart and you're just like one red flag, I'm out, which is really healthy for any girl. And this wait, I have a confession to make. You're scaring me. <laughs> what? Wait, you see how you say all of that and I know I'm good at that. What? <laughs> wait. <laughs> guess who I'm talking to again? I cannot guess. <laughs> You know how you're like, yeah, you see one red flag and you're out and you no, never talk to that person ever again. I'm talking to him again. Who is he? I don't even know. Bruh. <laughs> <laughs> That's the thing. Every girl, don't go back if it's toxic. Daisy, you need to listen to your own advice. And that's the thing, though. Like, <laughs> I will ask for advice, and this girl is so wise. Like, she will, off camera, be like, give me the most wise answer. But when it comes to yourself, you don't apply it. I do Why apply it, it, but, like, a, it feels good to feel wanted. Everyone wants to yes, feel wanted. Everyone wants to but feel... But not by the wrong person. You know, sometimes... <laughs> mm -mm. Don't compromise, ladies. No. Here's... No. Listen, don't listen. No. Hear me out. Okay. Save yourself. I literally talk to no one. Mm -hmm. I'm not talking to anyone. Yeah. I don't text any guy romantically, just even in a day-to-day -day basis. Yeah. I do not talk to a male at all. And that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It's okay. It's okay to be alone. It's a girl. I've been alone for the past five years. Like I, I have it's, you. <laughs> it's I have. O sea, wait. He tenido pretendientes, pero eso no cuenta. Esta way, esta way dice que ha estado single. She hasn't. Every Look, man falls at her feet. Okay, let's just set that. Set okay, that. Okay, but straight. like, given a title. Yeah. I've been single to like. You haven't been in a committed relationship, maybe in a second. Yeah. It, what do you mean in a second? In a very long time. When, mm -hmm. Who was the last person that was my actual boyfriend? Boyfriend that was in 2019. Let's not say. <laughs> who was it? Oh. Is that what you're talking about? Okay. Well, anyways. Let's just say I haven't had male companion in a while. Okay. Yeah. Feels good to feel wanted and to feel needed. I'm not saying that I'm gonna go and jump into a relationship with him, but I'm just, you know, just entertaining it a little bit. A little razzle dazzle. I don't no know. No razzle dazzle. Look, you are your own razzle dazzle, Miss Ma'am. I am. I am my own razzle dazzle, but I understand. I understand, like, especially like in your twenties, like everyone's getting married, everyone's falling in love, people are having kids left and right. And then I get me. like wanting to like be in love. But don't, I don't rush love. Be, no, I'm not trying to be in love. But, you know, like, I haven't talked to this person in a long time. He hit me up. I was kind of like, you know what? Like, I just, we have history. I just kind of miss the, the conversations the a little bit. Yeah. So I'm just no, like. Uh, you need a dog. <laughs> I, Jackie, no. I mean, like. You need to move back in with her mom. Well, like, I'm just not talking to anyone right now. So it just felt good to have a conversation with someone that I'm familiar with that knows me for me. Yeah, yeah. It's just kind of like a companion thing. I mean, I don't think we're... Wait, I'm literally... I'm by myself a lot of the time. She is. If anyone, I don't think people realize the double life that you live. Like, you're so independent. You're always alone. This I look at her freaking find my iPhone location. This girl is zoom, <laughs> zoom, 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 zoom. And I know she's by herself. Like, I know I can text her like, hey, come over. And she'd be like, okay. Yeah, she's, no. And you're home like you're but that's yeah. what i'm saying like just to have somebody like, like you the, want someone i i don't want him particular i just like that i have someone who's checking up on me besides my mom or yeah. like you know my i, I check up on my two friends <laughs> oh yeah yeah of course what i'm saying like, like my close friends like you know i talk to you frequently i talk to my mom to like you know my close people but it just feels good somebody that's not in my everyday life being like hey Interested, yeah. Yeah, just interested. Because, like, wait, puedo tener pinche un chingo de vatos, pero I just also don't like to start over or start fresh with anyone. I kind of just like to recycle. That's my thing. I like to recycle a lot of <laughs> potential lovers. I don't think that's bad. <laughs> <laughs> Did you just say recycle potential lovers? <laughs> If that's not the most toxic thing you've ever said, no, 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 no. You have to be open to other people. If it doesn't work out with that first person, what makes you think it's going to work out 
The second time, the third time, the fourth time, the fifth time. Never I just, settle. And I think and I think it's very it's a dangerous slope because then that's when like you compromise what you want, what yeah, you believe true. in, what you I just feel like having to do it is because like I've gone on so many and the thing about it is like Daisy is a beautiful person it is a mystery why she's single it is like you're beautiful you're such a hard worker you're so talented like you're funny you're a go-getter you're so strong like I could say a billion things like it's a mystery why you're single but I do think that maybe like God is like doing his thing and it's just not the time and sometimes it's just that it's just not the right time Someone will come along at the right moment, but I think this season could be for everything else. Travel, yeah. for your career, and, like, have fun. Like, don't look for it. Like, everything, like, God's timing is perfect. Yeah. You know, you don't have to go back to the guy that's not the best, you know, who that is true. you have, like, bad, not bad, but maybe, like, a little bit of toxic past with. Yeah. Yes, is it entertaining? For sure. Is it going to razzle dazzle? Yeah, but um, there's. Should I block him right now? No, don't block him. Don't block him. (laughs) (laughs) Don't block him. (laughs) Don't block. Don't block the guy. No, just you know, live your life. So I'm so excited though, and I think this is the most exciting thing. Like to see your friends who like long for love, like we all do. Um, to see that they're not in love yet. I'm excited because I get to see that one day you are going to be in love and one day you will find your person. You know, and one day you will get married. You know what I think is so terrifying though? I think it's um, what is that term called when you're a little bit too independent? Selfish? Hyper hyper independent? You don't know? I don't that. Selfish? No, <laughs> <laughs> no, Jackie. no, I'm kidding. There's this term recently that I read about me and my readings. I read about, I think it's called hyper independency where like it can be a little bit too bad to be too independent because she is super hyper independent. No, but to the point where like, look, if I get into, if whenever I marry someone, I just think in a perfect daisy world, I can have my own bedroom and you can have your own bedroom and then we can have a bedroom together and we can like choose when we want to like sleep in the same bed. But I still want to, but I still want to have my own space. But the thing about being married is, like, you become one. Um, and I think maybe this is a tribute to maybe I not think, ready to get married. Yeah, no, 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 no. Not I that mean, I'm saying maybe that. Maybe for a green card or something. Like, but no, you, <laughs> Garrett is married back here. Do you? Yeah. <laughs> what does it say? It says, it's a problem. It says, what trauma caused your hyperindependence? <laughs> <gasps> it's. A trauma response. You're hyper independent because it's a trauma response. You know why I think it's a trauma response? Because I feel like when I was younger, I expected the adults in my life or like the people around me like to provide for me. And when I feel like they didn't provide for me emotionally, which is my main biggest trigger, Mm -hmm. I felt like I needed to provide everything for myself at a very young age, which is why I was always so, you know, such an overachiever in, in school and sports. And I would be in like five sports and do this and do that because I felt like I needed to do all that for myself. And it has, now I see that it's trickled into like my hyper. I mean, what into my it? adult life, hyper independent. I'm super hyper independent now. I think because yeah. I think that is my trauma. Thank you, Garrett. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that's what it, I think also like, you know, there was this older man that I was talking to <clears throat> and I was like, so obsessed with him we talked for a very long time and I remember he I was moving to my new house into Texas and he's like oh like let me buy you furniture and I was like no what the fuck I can buy my own furniture and he was like okay like relax and then it wasn't until later that he was like look I know that you have your own he's like you don't have to keep like telling me he's like I know it and I was like fuck I think that's like a thing of mine that I always want people to know that I can provide for myself and that I don't need anything from them so if they try to leave me then like I don't really give a and fuck. I think that's where you self-sabotage yeah I self-sabotage a lot honestly. you're like I got this yeah oh you're gonna break my heart oh I'm gonna leave you first yeah yeah for sure and I I think I haven't I have met men where like where I've been able, I, back then I used to definitely be more in my masculine energy. Now I've learned to like be more in my feminine energy yeah. and be a girl and like turn off my brain and like let you take the lead Yeah. with, but then it kind of is it, like the last, um, 
person that I was talking to, I genuinely felt like he was the one. And uh, <laughs> we're like, he was her. definitely not the one. Well, you didn't like him, but, it, but I have never liked anyone she's been with. I told her, you need to find a man at church. That's it. That's it. You're not going to find him at the club. What the heck? Bro, I don't even club that much anymore. Miss you got to give me, you got to give me props In New York, she was forcing me to go out, guys. I wanted to go well, to sleep. Well, we were in New hand. York, in New York Fashion Week. Of course we're going to go out. We're not going to stay into the hotel room, but yeah, I don't I know, club. I, know, I, know. I don't drink like I used Where to. Where like, do you I'm date? Not- oh, wait, what's your dating pool? Let the girlies know. My dating pool? Yeah, like, where do you find, like, your... Um, New York, Puerto Rico, Miami. I mean, not city-wise, but, like, where do you normally, like, bump into guys that you're, every like, single interested me- in? Every single... Uh, well, the past three men that I've dated, I've only had three ex-boyfriends. I've met them through... In person. I've never dated anyone through online. Oh, I've, okay. I met them through friends or at social events, which is why, like, I like to go out and network because that's... Yeah. I will... I don't think I will ever, like date someone offline i like to meet people in person and get to know them and mm-hmm. i have to know them for a while for me to start dating them that's i have never good. just that's like good. met someone and been like love at first sight i don't believe in that so it's just like it's you know more rational, my dating yeah. pool because of like how my lifestyle is and all the traveling that i do it's like if i meet you and i like you we'll get to talking and like mm-hmm. but that's how i met the previous one that i was just talking about we were very compatible everything was good we were friends for like two years and it wasn't until like then that we romantically started to pursue each other. But then it was that kind of thing where it was like, well, if we're going to date, I want to see other people. And I was like, oh, girl, chinga, like, <laughs> the fuck? Like, goddamn, it was going so good. And then he's like, well, like, this is my views on relationships. And I was like, no, I don't want that. And that's why it didn't work out. And that's why I'm like, back to just not talking to anyone because I'm also not going to compromise for you being a pinche mujeriego. Like, what the fuck do I get out of that? the fuck i don't want to share you with anyone because you're not called to yeah like i don't want to do that so and and i feel like la does that a lot we're like it's very normal here to like like monogamy and like polygamy and like all that stuff that ain't Um, it but i was like you know what i've dated in la i've dated in doubt actually have you gone to church i didn't (laughs) i have not gone to church jackie you know what just saying but yeah, so it's it's just not it. But you date the guys that you're interested in, like you find like bi mutual, um, you know, friends. Maybe I do just need to go to church. I mean, yeah, def- everyone needs the Lord. But uh, the thing with me, it's like, I don't get religious or anything, but like I do talk to God and I pray and I do. I don't feel like I need to go to church to be close to Him. You get me? Yeah, I mean, and like I He's omnipresent, and He's I everywhere. also don't want to go to church being like, "Oh, this is where I'm gonna." Like, no, to definitely go don't go like to make it like you're dating. Yeah, like, obviously, like cool. no. I, but I'm just saying, like, you are who you hang around with. 100%. I mean, if you're gonna go to a certain place, you're gonna find people with certain characteristics. I think those are your characteristics. No, I know. And I'm not saying, <laughs> I'm not saying that like, but I'm saying like, if you're going to go to the club, but you keep no, bringing, I'm up, not, you keep I'm bringing not, up, I'm bringing the up the club. I think I'm you sorry. keep bringing up the club because it's a but social environment. A, but I think like, it's an example. It's definitely not, like, but not my example though. Cause like, no, 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 no. I think now we're your I'm friends. At, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's just social events, whether it's an social, event, yeah. New, New York Fashion Week or like Art Basel, like that, those, that's my dating pool. It's like yeah, those yeah, yeah. big social networking events. That's where my dating pool mm-hmm. is at. Um, I have never casually ran into someone at like a freaking Target or like at the airport. You would imagine that all the times that I'm at the airport, I would run into someone there, but no. Yeah. Yeah, no. But I'm not complaining and I love my mm-hmm. life. I'm super... I'm not looking for it, honestly. I had just brought up the fact that I was, I wanted to confess to you because I tell you everything. And I remember I told you yesterday, I was like, I have a confession to make. And you were like, what? And I was like, I'll tell you on the podcast. You're scaring me. No, it was just that. No, but yeah. It's like a big. I understand. I don't think it's like a big deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My life is just a movie. What are your like top three requirements in a guy? To be family oriented. That's the thing. You know, the first thing I think about when I talk to a guy is I'm like, mm-hmm. would he fit in the carne asada? Would he be able to like 
get along with my family. I swear to God, Yurt. I swear that's like it's honestly very important. It's like so that's important. where families like connect. No, family to me is the number one most important yeah. thing. So it's like You're really close I to envision family. you like walking into my mom's and you know my mom has carne asadas all the fucking time. She does. Like I'm so, talking about like, I'll be like, hey, you you hit yeah. me up and I'm like, hey, yeah. I'm having a carne asada. Like, come over. She does always say she always does it. Yeah. I think that's just like what brings like our the community family, together, yeah. you know? So and it's I, so good. I literally think you I envision I when I talk to a guy, I envision I'm like, do I see myself walking down, holding his hand, meeting like my family? Mm-hmm. Like that's the number like one thing. Like fit I think. in naturally, like Exactly. Yeah. And so <clears throat> you see the other guy that I was talking to, he fit he passed the vibe check because he was learning Spanish. So I was like, Oh, okay, like mm-hmm. you know, but anyways, that's the number one thing. I think being family oriented and being respectful because I can date a guy and he have everything, but he won't respect himself or his family or like me. And that's just like family respect. And I think just loyalty. I am a very loyal person to my loved ones. Like you need me. I'm there. You don't, you like, I'm just so like, I would say passionate. I'm very passionate and loyal to like the people around me. So I just expect that from my partner, I guess you could say. I don't mm-hmm. think that's really high standards. No, that's not. But you need to have um, uh, 800 credit score and um, no, wait. <laughs> wait, what's yours? Actually, I don't know. I have to check my Is credit it card. It's it not an ad. The last time I checked, it was like 700 something. Yeah. Do yeah. finances play a part or like? Um, like for someone who has it all, I feel like you have a, you know, you have it all together. So to I feel like I do to a certain extent, but not like, look, at the end of the day, I've been paying my own bills since I moved out of my mom's house, you know? She's been... I think now I'm, I'm ready to just have someone come into my life and be like, hey, baby girl, let me help you with your bills. Just turn off your brain, go to the spa with your friends, like do something like, can I do that for myself? Sure. But like, I'm tired of paying my own bills. <laughs> I'm tired of taking care of myself. Like, <laughs> fuck, like, you know? <laughs> so I think finances play a huge part in that to where it's like let me take someone this pay her bills <laughs> right <laughs> somebody now. pay my fucking core bill right now <laughs> no but <laughs> i'm dead i think finances play a part yeah i i i would be lying if i say no because like even in new york i was like hey let's go stay at the bakker hotel for one night like yeah. that is like i like to do spontaneous things like that where i don't have to think about the finances, you know. You want to be financially established and you want to be with someone that. That is also, fi- look, I I have a table and I'm very thankful to bring all these things to the table. So mm-hmm. I just expect that my partner bring the same, if not more. Mm-hmm. I think somebody bringing less than that is like cutting myself short. Because it's like, why have I worked my ass off for all of this? Mm-hmm. But then we were also talking in the car where you were like, you can't judge a book by its cover. But it's like, yeah. I think in my position, I kind of have to a little bit because like... And I think that that speaks more to like character. Like don't judge a book by its cover. Like more like character wise, like are they a genuine person? Are they a good person? Or I mean, finances is like secondary, but... Of course. But, but obviously like you don't about know. it in the long yeah, run yeah, though. Long call, long I think call. I'm just like... I finances just don't do matter. To, I get that. You don't want to, um, look, I already provide, you don't want to be in your masculine energy. Like you exactly. Said. You and want I don't someone that's going to take care of you, going to care for you, going to yeah, I say, go get your nails done. Like I got dinner. Yeah, exactly. Like, and I love to provide for myself. I love to provide for like my friends and my family, you know, but romantically, I don't want to have to do that. No. And I don't so, think any woman should. Yeah. I don't fucking think Speaking so ladies. Like somebody fuck. don't settle y'all. Don't settle. <laughs> Wait, it's porque... La neta, yo soy un poquito atrevida. ¿Para qué? Pues what I want. Oh, with this guy? No, it's just like in general. Oh, yeah, you're a go-getter. I feel like if I want something, like, I just know I'm going to get it. And I think that's like a thing about me is I'm very confident when it comes to getting what I want. Yeah, but yeah, sure. I don't have to step on people to be where I'm at. Because I've never done that. I've never used anyone for fucking clout or like anything like that. Mm-hmm. You're very much your own. I just feel like, be- I feel like because I crossed the border, I feel like that, I was like, if I can do that, I can do anything without having to, you know, need anything from anyone or have to be malicious or like, mm-hmm. I don't know. I think I do everything 
with trying to prove myself. So is it like internal? Or I think it's think? more so of like, I literally only see myself as my biggest competition. I'm my biggest critic. I can be my biggest enemy. So at the end of the day, it's like, if I want something, I'm going to get it because I want it. Not because it's going to prove it yeah. to anyone around me, but because I want to prove it to myself that I can get it, that I can be that, that I can do that, that I can live that. I don't think You're it's competitive, a, but with yourself. Exactly. Like, that's what it is. And like, I, I You're think. Like, how can I top that? How can I get exactly. this? And I, I think. Um, You're ambitious. I think it can be bad in the sense of like, I can self-sabotage like the good things sometimes. Yeah. Why? Why do you self-sabotage? I think I self-sabotage because it's also like a trauma thing. Like, I'd rather just leave before you leave me. <laughs> Girl's been through a thing or two. I have been through a lot, okay? Yeah. I have been she through a lot. Been through a lot. I feel like maybe one day I can, like, maybe one day I'll open up. But I just feel like because of the way things have played out, I just don't know how the world will receive, like, things that I've been through. Like, for example, like, in my childhood or, like, stuff, like, that's really dark. I just don't know how. Yeah, I mean, and there's things that you're also called to keep to yourself, too. Because, like, it's... It's a, intimate. And it's, it's very, very, yeah, it's very intimate. And I think my life is very bright and beautiful, but yet again, it's like so dark and sad at the same time when you actually get to like the gritty things of like, I feel like this might get a little bit dark, but every time, I don't know if I'm going to include this, but remember like whenever I was like living in LA like full time and then I would like see you like once in a blue moon and you'd be like, oh, like what happened? And I'm like, oh, I just got out of here and I just did this and blah, blah, blah. and I would say it with like such a happy voice and you would just be like, what the fuck, girl? Like, what the fuck? And it was like that for like two, three mm -hmm. times where you like you, you saw kinda, me. You kind of like normalized I going did. through a lot of really hard things. Yeah, I did. I think I still do. And I think that's something that you're still figuring out and like yeah, working sure. through like how to process because your way of processing it was almost it's like rational, rationalizing it or saying like, that's normal. That's what's going to happen to me. Like, that's okay. Yeah. I also like, cause you know, I mean, I talked about this already in the public, but like when the whole like essay situation happened at the hotel with like the whole situation. Do you know what you're trying to talk about? Mm -hmm. Like, when that happened, I literally just, like, swooped into the rung, and I was like, okay, like, it was normal. I'm going to keep going on with my day. I feel like to another person, they probably would have, like, internalized it, made it their real life, like, m like really, like, let it affect. But I feel like because I just... So yeah, sweeping I think one thing that not a lot of people know is that your day-to-day -day life is jam-packed. You go through so much when one day, let alone one week, let alone one year, that I think that you suppress so many things because you go through so much. Like, you're literally booked and busy. Like, people do not realize that, like, you go through a lot. And I think you suppress it because you're just like, next, 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 next. And I think I remember when you brought that up way back, but... um you were very nonchalant about it. And I was, I was like, that's, that was like, it. what are you, what's what? Cause you're just, you normalize this lifestyle that's just been very real to you. Like that's just, is it normal? No. Was it okay? Definitely not. But I think you were so young and I think you've lacked like mentored mentorship, like yeah. someone guiding you, someone speaking to you. <laughs> Now you gazing off into them. I'm, I feel like when I talk about things like this, I tend to like, um, do you ever just feel like you're like behind your eyes and like someone else is like taking control and you're like kind of looking at it kind of like as a video game? Santo, no. What? <laughs> um, isn't that called? Um, Wait, do you know what I'm talking about? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. Isn't oh it? Wait, isn't is it? Not? There's a, there's an, there's a word for it. You, um, you're back here and like yeah, life is depersonalization. depersonalization. Yeah. I have a friend. Well, maybe it's you. <laughs> <laughs> I have a friend that goes, I think it might. Yeah. You, you go through that. Like where you, it's not, 
like life is happening before your eyes but you're not in control or you you like oh separate yourself you know from your reality so i feel like as soon as we started talking about that like my brain was just like yeah and i think it is a trauma response i think it is a trauma response i think i need to go to therapy about that because i don't mm-hmm. think i've I don't think I've actually, like, gone to... Address that in your life? No, I think I've addressed other things and, like, other... But that type of response, yeah. You know, I tend to derail... Is it called derealize or detach? No, no, no. no. It's what she said. Depersonalization. I think that's what I have. And I, have. I think that's what happens when you disassociate yourself with all of these things that happen to you, that you... Not this being a therapy session. <laughs> not Jackie Romero with the... <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think I've ever put a word or like a specific yeah. thing to it, but I think that I it's, tend to do that a lot when I, when I have mm-hmm. a lot of and pressure question, or a lot question, of... Question, question. What is your family or like, what is your background with like um, therapy, like... Like, well, I mean, I went to therapy rig- rigorously. Mm-hmm. Um, I think 2020, 2019, 2020. And I think I stopped right before I moved to Texas. Mm-hmm. And then I didn't go to therapy the whole time in Texas. And it wasn't up until recently, until last month. I hit up my therapist and she was like, oh my gosh, like, how have you been? Like, you know, I haven't talked to you in a long time. And I went back to therapy and I felt like I just needed one session and that was it. I, f- I mean, I don't know. Like, that's about it. But like, for example, like, I don't know. I just, I never ask for professional help until it's like really bad. Mm-hmm. Now. And I think I can like speak towards this because in the Mexican community, like we're first generation. Dude. It's mental health is not, um, I remember it's not it, spoken it's about, not. it's not going to therapy. It's not that it's not encouraged, but like, it's not encouraged in our in Mexican community. Culture. It's not, it's not in, in our Latin parents culture. haven't gone to therapy. No, it's not. Encouraged. So they can't really advise it. No. And I think that's where we're kind of left in the dark because when we're going through something, it's, um, it's, but it's like, like, get through it. It's get like, over well, we, it. we've gone through it when we were little. We did, we went through this and they almost make you feel like your feelings are not valid. I yeah. went through that with my parents because they were like, what do you mean you're depressed? Like, I went through this when I was younger and we yeah. didn't have water and food and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, And oh, I think fuck, it stems like, from like, that's all they know. So that's all they can suggest, you know, like, yeah. and it's also like a testament to their testimony. Like, well, that's what I went through. And I'm giving you the advice that, you know, I applied to my own life, not because they did or did not know that was best that's just what happened to them so yeah when you come to them they're like do this because i did that you know and i think if they knew that therapy was so helpful and so insightful and like so healing they would advise both you and me like yeah do it yeah like let's let's talk about this yeah let's like cross this hurdle but they don't advise us because they've never done it themselves, yeah. you know? And it's not out of a place of... It's not out of a place of, like, you know, yeah, I get, bad I, or... Yeah, yeah, I get That's it. just, like... It's just not something that they know. It's yeah, not something it's that... Yeah, it's unknown to them. Yeah. I but, think that's why we are left yeah. so much in dark and we're meant to, like, figure it out ourselves. Mm-hmm. But the, I also feel like that's why our generation has fallen to, like, depression or anxiety. Because it's, like... I just There's, think times were just so different. Times are different. And, like... Nowadays with social media and with just like how everything is now, I feel like obviously like it's more prominent now in in our generation, like mental health. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, my background is just that. Like I didn't seek help until the people around me were like, you need help. If not, we're not going to be in your life. And I was like, oh, okay. This was like back in like 2019. Excuse me. Right. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I mean, I'm doing good now. Yeah. I have seen you grow tremendously. I have grown I will a lot. say. I have grown a lot. I definitely still like, I, there's still a lot of growing to do, I will say. There is. There's so much. And we were just talking about we, this. We were saying like, how like, right now I feel, and like you, you even say like, you have your life together. And I feel like I have my life together. But when I'm 30, I'm probably going to look back and be like, oh my God, I was such a mess in my I 20s. I had so much more to grow. Yeah. I had so much more to grow. And I think that's 
that's something that I look forward to. I think back then I didn't because I'm just like, oh, well, I'm going to die one day. We might as well just die now. <laughs> that's, that's not it. That's the mentality that I used yeah. to have. Now I'm just kind of like, I can't wait to like have kids or like a family. Actually, I'm lying. I don't know if I want kids, but <laughs> just like things like that. Things like that excite me now. I think back then I just didn't look forward to any of that. You know? Yeah. 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 I, I And I get that. Like, I think too, the world is so loud right now that like, there's so many voices saying, like, there's so many dark voices. And I think you really have to, like, overshadow that with your own light. Yeah. With And I think it's so important to, like, have your own, like, stand on your own ground. Because there's always going to be someone telling you how to feel, what to do, Someone's how to be. Someone's always going to knock you down. How to dress. You have to... Like, you have to really, like, for me, like, I cling, like, to the Lord. Like, yeah. you know, that's my truth. Yeah. But like there's always going to be a force saying do this, do that, do that. And it's so easy to like spiral. It's so easy to stay and go down the wrong path. Stay in darkness or like, you know, stay in like your trauma, you know? You know what? Also, like you have to pull, you don't have to pull yourself out, but you have to reach for the light. You know what I mean? You know like, what I learned? Therapy is very good. You know what I learned is that when you're in a dark place, you have to remember that you are the light in that dark place. Mm-hmm. You know, and, at once and there's I, there's nothing too dark that you cannot come out of. There's yeah. redemption for everything. Yeah, I think that's something that I had to learn because mm-hmm. I used to think that I was the darkness in the dark, but then they were no. like, "No, you're the light in the darkness." And that's the thing too. That kind of reminds me, like sometimes people want to like categorize you as your 2016 self. 2017 self no yeah, you fuck no. are always growing evolving. you're always changing yeah. you're always evolving if you want to heal you can heal you, you don't can have to become stay a, yeah exactly that just because another person has that yourself. version of you doesn't mean yeah. that, you, that you are still that Mm-mm. same version no and you don't owe them like some people like want to like almost make you uncomfortable and be like that's the perception i have of you like that's where you're gonna stay yeah and no that's that's literally like not okay like it, you, you only make that your reality if you make your reality. If you like submit to that. Yeah, like, no. like somebody can be like, well, blah, blah, blah. I'm be like, I don't give a fuck. I'm not the same person. This is who I am today. If you don't know me for who I am today, then that sounds like a personal problem. You yeah. don't know me for me then. You just know that version. And I'm sorry that you got mm-hmm. left with that version, but I am not that person. Yeah, because we change every day. We change every, every fucking, second. Every, every little second. thing that happens to mm-hmm. us, like it shapes us. Yeah. I mean, it could be for the best and it can also be for the worst, but you know, that's just, that's it's just life. life. It's life. That is and life. you have to, hold, you have to like hold that loosely. Like, and I think that's, it's really important too. Like when it comes to other people, like your perspective, yeah. like sometimes it's not about you. Sometimes it's not about that interaction itself. It's what happened last week. It's, yeah, they didn't sleep. It's they, they're going through something like, it's yeah. just, you know, yeah otherly you know what i mean for sure but also like don't take that like personal don't take it personal we're changing we're evolving have grace keep going have kindness for others i think that's just like the biggest thing be forgiving kind and forgiving be forgiving because the same way you forgive yourself you need to forgive others Mm -hmm. because people are gonna wrong you yeah people are gonna be mean I think also that's why I've been able to kind of be where I am today because I have shown forgiveness I think that my biggest flaw was not forgiving myself for things that I did or situations that I went through and then when I did forgive myself I was forgetting to forgive those that did me wrong Mm -hmm. so once I really learned to forgive myself and those I was really able to grow and forgive others exactly like forgive yourself you really do even up to now What has happened to me in the past, like I literally have forgave everyone for everything I forgave myself. It is because it's just like, I'm not going to sit here and dwell and be depressed and like, and no one's perfect. Exactly. That's why I'm like, human, like, we're so like rotten inside. Like, it's just our nature. Like, we're going to mess up. We're not perfect. No one is perfect. No one is perfect. And no one can judge you, literally. Like, only God can judge you. And that's something that I also had to learn. Mm -hmm. do you do you agree with that yeah I think too like that I feel like that ties in with validation like I think that if you allow people to if you get your validation from people then 
It's gonna. It's gonna hurt. eat you alive. It's gonna. It's literally gonna always, eat you alive. Yeah, it's gonna affect you always. But like, yeah, only judge. I mean, only God can judge you, so to speak. Yes. Yeah. But are people's opinions gonna be loud? Yes. Yeah, you but you have it. to. I think that's where your validation comes from. Like, am I who they say they? Am I who they say I am? No, no. I am my own. And you have to be rooted. I feel like in who you are. Yeah. And not let outside that's what i'm saying about like voices like oh the world's gonna ro- roar the yeah. road's gonna tell you, you you're know, this you're that, that okay, that's and like, you have to be strong you have to be like a tree like yeah. that's a and y'all i love jackie so much literally in my everyday life i call you and just check up on you and just talk to you and you <laughs> hang out and everything but when i'm going through it when I really need some guidance and <laughs> wisdom, I beep, 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 beep. I'm like, Jackie, and you're like, friend. And I'm like, friend. And I think, too, one thing about Daisy is, like, se le cae el mundo. Siempre se le está cayendo el mundo. And I'm like, friend, I'm literally making an avocado toast right now in my PJs. Like, how is it that you got through this much at noon? And I'm like, breathe. I'm like, cry if you need to cry. Cry if you need to cry. But I'm like. We just got so much hap- I so much happened to you, God. But- I'm it's, sorry, I don't mean to swear so to God. It's always so serious. And it's heavy. Your life is very heavy. It's, like it's just real, like, in New York, deal. I saw you and we're on our way to the thing. And I'm like, well, this is the, 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 the. And you're like, <gasps> and then I just came back from it. And I'm like, da, 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 da. and you're like, <gasps> no, we're una pinche película. Es una novela but, esta. But I wouldn't trade my life for anything. I love my mm-hmm. life. I love the people yeah, yeah. in it. I'm super thankful and super grateful for everything and I feel like because my heart is genuinely filled with gratitude life you know gives me yeah. as I give out and Thanksgiving is so good I know we like I, I saw that you kept I like, made a little talking. TikTok but well, I went to church right and yeah. so it, they talked about Thanksgiving and like yeah. Thanksgiving is just being grateful being thankful mm-hmm. like you know we have to f- and I think that has to do with your focus like what are you focusing on the good or the bad like no thank you that I have life God like thank you that I woke up today like everything and limelight is good is it the end of the world no no are you dead no what do they say to like if it's not gonna matter in five years then don't think about it for longer than five minutes and I think that's what also helps me be like chill like am I worried about it yes but can I like surrender and say it is what it is yeah yeah for sure you can like you know be thankful. Like, thank you. I went through that. Like, it's going to mold me into. Yeah, for sure. That's what I'm thankful for the good and I'm better. thankful for the bad. I just think being it's thankful life, in yeah. general is just like, I just think it's such a beautiful thing. I'm thankful for the bad moments. I'm thankful for the good moments. You have a beautiful this. life, though. I will say. Yeah, I've, I've been love- interning as a Daisy Marquise. <laughs> You were like, thank you. I took I'm her like, to, oh wait, my wait. God, Uber Black. Oh, hey. <laughs> no, I took her, Garrett. I took her with me to New York. And she was like, this trip is sponsored by Daisy Marquez. <laughs> it's just like, it's it was, so nice. It was hilarious. You're blessed. You no, you're, you. you have a great life. Thank you so much. I think you make it better. You do for sure. Which is why I wanted to come on here. And I was like, the world needs to see how we have these conversations, how good we balance each other. And it's, I just think our friendship is genuine and it's built off of love and we have history, mistakes yeah. and just like we literally first of all let me tell you guys how i met jackie okay i was the new girl in middle school and i was like la, 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 la. i was trying to make friends with everybody i'm already sitting in class prepared she walks in and i was like jackie and she's like what the fuck and she didn't pay attention to me she could care less that i was a new girl but i was like using that to my advantage to make friends and like she just really, she was just in her own little world. And I was just trying to be friends with everyone. And I was like, I'm going to make her like me. And then I don't know at what point we just started hanging out more. And our houses, like, we're so close together. We would go to each other's houses. And yeah. we've been friends ever since eighth grade. Yeah, we've been friends for like 12 years, We've years. seen so, I think, you know what else I think is so beautiful is that we have seen so many different versions Stages of each of other. Lives, yeah. And we have been there. We haven't. Like, it's just been such a beautiful friendship like genuine friendship i see you as family now you know i love your sisters like you it's just like such a beautiful <laughs> thing yeah i know yeah i know you're definitely family like yeah. we We've gone i think we together. ride for each other for sure yeah what the fuck hell yeah mm-hmm. i'm fucking killing anyone that fucks with you actually i can't say that on the podcast but <laughs> don't do that <laughs> 
But I'm very thankful, and I just want to say um, thank you for coming on here, and hopefully you come back on Daisy Diaries. Uh, thank you for having me. And I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I will talk to you guys on the next one. Bye, guys. Bye.